This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Roderick Tung. This month in Heart Rhythm Journal, our featured article comes from Bordeaux, France, and we're really happy to have Thomas Pombron here with us, the first author and the corresponding author of this really nice paper called The Epicardial Course of the Septal Pulmonary Bundle, Anatomic Considerations and Clinical Implications of that darn roof line. Toma, welcome. Thank you very much, Rodrick. Thank you for this very kind invitation. Well, congratulations, first of all. For all the viewers who are going to be reading your paper, we want to bring this paper to life, and the figures are simply stunning. And I think we all love the anatomy, but the roof line affects everyone. Every electrophysiologist has pulled some sort of roof line and struggled. This is a common clinical problem. And I think this paper is going to be delightful to read. Let's dive a little bit in to why you decided to start trying to understand the anatomy of the roof line. Did the roof line start getting harder in Bordeaux for some reason? That was exactly the case. Uh, we have several reasons, uh, several factors that have contributed to uh, uh, made us consider that probably we were overestimating our rate of roof line block uh, uh, in our previous papers. Uh, uh, first factor uh, was that uh, there is now some technological advance provided by high density mapping that have progressively taken over uh, the conventional maneuvers. Uh, for instance, in the paper, we showed that uh, the presence of double potentials along the roof line may not guarantee that the roof line is blocked. Mm -hmm. uh, a second factor is that we have, uh, during the last three years, operated a major shift uh, in our AF ablation strategy. Uh, you know that we were previously uh, uh, doing electrical substrate-based substrate ablation aiming for AF termination. And at the end of the road, after all these years, we have realized that we were just uh, 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 doing uh, a patchy lesion set involving uh, mainly the entire wall. And this is a greatly uh, 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 deleteriously impacting the way we are validating our roof line because it's creating heterogeneity of the conduction velocity uh, and the uh, access to the roof line can be uh, uh, largely slower. Uh, now we have uh, shifted for a pure anatomical approach, which is associated with PD isolation and three linear lesions at the main anatomical isthmus, including the roof line, but also the mitral line with the vein of martial ethanol infusion. And with this approach, uh, one of the main advantages that we are preserving anterior wall activation and this preservation of the activation will make roof line validation much clearer. The third and last factor I think that have uh, uh, been important is our recent focus on uh, an electrical pattern that is uh, for us a clear signature of an epicardial bypass through the roof line. And this electrical pattern may not be identified by uh, 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 the automatic annotation of our electroanatomic mapping system. And I think it is important to recognize it, to re-annotate it manually and uh, reveal uh, the presence of a concealed epicardial bypass. I think that's fantastic, Thomas. And, and again, we're hearing the world famous Bordeaux group saying, maybe how we defined roof block in the past was not truly roof block. And it's great to rethink this with high resolution mapping. So take us exactly. a little bit through one of the really unique features of us having the feature article and having the, having the author is we want to have the author take us through some of the key figures. So take us through a couple of these key figures and, and bring them to life for us. What should we be looking for for these electrical signatures? Okay, so to, to make it clear, uh, we have done uh, uh, iterative uh, activation mapping, high density activation mapping of the dome and of the posterior wall in uh, the same patient during different condi uh, conditions of activation. To do so, we have done these uh, maps after PV isolation and mitral line block to make it very clear. You see here on the left, uh, left appendage pacing and dome and posterior wall activation before creating any uh, lesion at the roof line. And we see a downstream activation of the dome and posterior wall. And during the, this downstream activation, we have a synchronous activation of the two layers that constitute uh, the dome. 
And when we have this synchronous activation, we have a synergistic effect that makes that we have very simple, very ample, very nice uh, triphasic uh, signals. The same happens once we have blocked our roof line transmurally, which happened in two thirds of our patient in our paper. And we see this time that we have a reversal of the activation with an upward activation, but we still have a synchronous activation of the epicardial layer and the endocardial layer. I mean by that the septopulmonary bundle and the septoatrial bundle. And with this synchronous activation, when we look at the very same area than the previous map, we see that we still have, of course, with a longer delay, a very nice, simple triphasic deflection. But one hour later, the patient had uh, a, 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 a decreasing of uh, the edema uh, made at the roof line, and our roof line was not blocked anymore. It was still impossible to capture the left atrium while pacing at the roof line, but we observed a complete change, a, a complete change of the uh, electrical pattern at the very same area. You see here that we now have a much more complex signal. And this is the signal that is uh, uh, typical of an epicardial bypass. You see here that we have a low, pre a low amplitude prepotential, low frequency prepotential, that will be followed by a higher amplitude prepotential. And we see here two things. The uh, splitting of the two potentials is reflecting the fact that we have a sequential activation of the epicardial layer first, and then a downstream activation of the endocardial layer. I mean that the low, low amplitude potential is the epicardial activation, and the higher amplitude potential is the endocardial activation. But we see, and this is the second and last point, that the global amplitude has decreased, and this may reflect the loss of the synergistic activation of the two layers. And I think that's beautiful. And every reader should stare at these figures for a very long time. And it's great that you're able to take us through because there are these electrogram signatures of these sites, you know, where sometimes you have focal breakthrough into the posterior wall, which many people observed. And I know it's also all over Twitter. Now, the next phase of your paper, because it's two phases, is really trying to explain why this is so challenging. And I love the anatomy. And I think we want to show the viewers some of the CT micro uh, tom tomography yes. that you have. So maybe you can yes. take us through that because what you're able to show questions the whole idea of exactly. Papez and Robert Anderson had us a great editorial exactly. about idea that these are just distinct fibers. Yes, I know you like anatomy, so I, I'm going to show you this, this micro CT uh, imaging. Uh, in fact, as you said, we were very upset to finally see that we were only able to block two thirds of our roof line and we wanted to understand why, because it did not make sense for us to not being able to block uh, an area that is supposed to be, when we look at the previous anatomical papers, uh, uh, barely reaching three to four millimeters of, of, of thickness. So it was not making sense for us especially regarding the recent improvement of force sensing, stability monitoring, and so on. So we had to do uh, an additional uh, anatomical uh, uh, evaluation that we did with microtomography. And this is uh, what we did in five human donor hearts. And uh, we saw two uh, key points. The first point was only a confirmation of what was previously reported, which is that generally the higher, we see here a, a sagittal view of the left atrium, of course, with the anterior wall and the posterior wall. And what anatomist and especially Robert Anderson, Anderson clearly calls the dome, which is the area between the pulmonary veins, which we should uh, rather call dome than posterior wall. And we see that uh, the first find, finding is that uh, usually the higher portion of the dome is thicker than the lower portion. So that's a confirmation of previously reports, of previous reports. But the very new finding we had with microtomography and then with histological analysis is that we observed layers of fat interposed between the epicardial septopulmonary bundle and the endocardial septoatrial bundle. And this is a very new finding that has a very important impl implication, I think. 
because it can explain it can explain two phenomena we observed in the study. First, this difficulty to reach the epicardial part of the dome when we are ablating from the endocardial aspect may be explained by the fact that fat has a very low electrical conductivity, fivefold five fold lower than myocardium, and a very low heat conductivity, threefold lower. And that may be a key obstacle against radiofrequency and lesion creation until uh, the epicardial aspect of uh, the, the higher portion of the dome. And the second phenomena is the mitigation of the epicardial electrical activity recorded from the endocardial aspect. And this is what we showed in our paper by showing that the epicardial activity was reflected by a very low amplitude signal. But Rob, this was also beautifully showed in your papers two years ago in Heart Reason uh, concerning uh, AF epicardial ablation. I clearly uh, remember the last figure of your paper when you show this patient uh, that you record from the endocardial aspect and the epicardial aspect concomitantly. And that was really striking to see that you showed he had a completely isolated dome area from the endocardial aspect, while concomitantly at the same time from the epicardial aspect, you had huge sharp ample AF signals. And that was not making sense not to see these signals from the endocardial aspect with a only three millimeter uh, thick uh, myocardium, unless uh, we understand that maybe sometimes we can have this fat in their position. Well, they say a picture says a thousand words, and I think this image is one to be cherished. This is going to be amazing for the journal, and I want to congratulate you for this important contribution. Yet again, something great coming from Bordeaux. Thomas, thank you for joining us on Heart Rhythm TV, and thank you for this important contribution. Thank you very much, Rod. Thank you very much.